Hello and welcome to the TTI Distribution Download, the podcast where we talk about all things happening in the world of electronic components with the specialists of TTI. Today it's another installment of Big Ideas and Little Known Facts about Connectors with John Sandy of TTI and Dan Venuto of Molex. Hello, welcome everybody today. Dan and John here. We're here to speak with Haley Henley, who's the product manager in Molex's power and signal business unit to talk about connector tooling development and the importance of distribution in the tooling space. Hi Haley, great to have you with us. Um, I'll tell you what, why don't we start with just you giving the audience a little bit of an overview of who you are and, uh, and what you do at Molex. Sure. Well, thanks John. Thanks Dan. Thanks guys for having me. I interned with Molex while I was in my undergraduate program, so that would have been around 2016, and then I started full-time immediately after that. So my first five years were in a variety of project and product management roles that I would say have all helped prepare me for my current role with our power and signal team. But I I had to laugh kind of looking at some of our talking points for today because I feel like both my professional career path and personal life have all kind of happened within Molex, meaning as I've been working, I graduated from college, I got married, I started building a family. So actually that transition in 2021 to our power and signal business unit and our application tooling team occurred in 2021 when I was returning to work after the birth of my son. That's great to hear. You know, Molex is uh, always considered a family. And in your case, you know, everybody gets to watch the family grow up. So um, that that is uh, that's an amazing story. But do you want to tell us a little bit about the Molex tooling group and what makes it such a good fit for distribution? Yeah, we'll give you uh, like application tooling in a nutshell. But I think when I think of application tooling at a high level, it's an incredibly diverse product line, meaning there's a lot of different types of products that would fall under that umbrella. But at the end of the day, we're mostly designing crimping tools, right? These are tools when we're trying to attach a wire and a terminal together. Uh, We certainly have tools that will help strip the wire for crimping, tools that will perform the actual crimping, and then tools that will help insert and extract the terminals from the connector housing. But I would say tooling is a great fit for just distribution specifically because In my mind, connectors and tooling are really two sides of the same coin. So if I use the example of our power and signal connectors, all of those connectors we sell require crimp terminals, right? Um, So what that means for distribution is that if they are already selling all of those various parts of the connector solution, the terminals, the receptacles, plugs, headers, you name it, um, then they really want to also be selling the tooling to support that connector solution and that full customer crimping use case because otherwise we're missing out. So hey, bearing in mind how important it is for the customer specifically to be able to come along and get all the different bits and pieces he needs, as you said before, the tooling, the contacts, the housings. How good, How does TTI do from your point of view? And, and is there anything um, we really want to let the customer know about what makes TTI a good place to come for these parts? Well, I think one of the things TTI does really well is understand the full customer use case, meaning they know the different questions to ask a customer to help pull out what those connector requirements are, but they also know the questions to ask that are going to help pull out the different requirements related to tooling. So I guess in the real world, how does that play out? Uh, Well, I think Molex products, our connectors are known for their quality and reliability, and our tooling has a similar reputation. But one of the things I'm constantly reiterating to customers is Molex tooling is the only group that has access to Molex connector designs, Molex technical drawings, and Molex engineers, right? Um, So we're having those conversations together when we're developing the connectors and the tooling. And TTI really understands that. So in the same conversation where they're on the phone or they're visiting in person a customer and they're talking about those connector requirements, they're also talking about, number one, the importance of matching the original equipment manufacturer of the terminal and the tool, but they're also asking them those questions that are going to help pull out the customer's requirements. Fantastic. Thanks for that. So... Along those lines, when it comes to a new product development, how does the uh, tooling group approach that? 
It's a non-negotiable for us. Uh, I'll reiterate on what I said earlier, where I like to use the phrase, if it's touching the metal of the terminal, you have to match the original equipment manufacturer. So if I use an example such as a, a Molex terminal, and now a customer is trying to decide whether a, a hand crimp tool would best be used for that or an applicator, at the end of the day, we'll, we'll get them to the type of tool they need. But the big thing we're always driving home is make sure that it is manufactured by the, the same OEM. So again, if it's a, a Molex terminal, we want it to be a Molex tool. And if one of our competitors were in the room, I would say the same thing, right? If it's a non-Molex terminal, I would say use the non-Molex tool because at the end of the day, our goal is to support that customer um, in that new product development process. And of course, selfishly, I want that to be Molex. Um, but at the end of the day, if that can't be Molex, you know, we want to make sure that we're always um, leading customers toward quality solutions. And that means matching the terminal and the tooling with the same OEM. Thank you, Haley. And then looking across all of Molex, you're in the power and signal uh, business unit. Do you develop con uh, connector tooling for other divisions and other business units as well? We do. I would say the vast majority of the tooling projects we take on usually stem from the power and signal group, but we consider ourselves a service. Uh, you know, tooling is, of course, our own PL, uh, Profit and Loss Center, like many other parts of Molex, but I think the way we try to train our team is that we are really a service. So if there is a corner of Molex that we typically don't work with, but they have a need for a specific tool to be developed, we're going to have that conversation with them every time and say, what type of tools do you need? Uh, what products are you working with? And we will give that opportunity a, a fair shake to see if that's something that our group can take on and support. Thank you, Haley. And just looking at uh, when these tools are deployed out into the field, what type of resources does Molex have to support the customer? In terms of support resources, I would say we take a multi-layered approach. Probably that top tier, I would say, is I first would want our sales personnel and the Molex distributors like TTI to be that first line support. Meaning if that customer has the relationship with TTI, uh, like I mentioned earlier, TTI dedicates a lot of resources toward training their personnel on not only Molex's connector products, but also our tooling products. So the benefit of that is they can often answer a lot of those questions on Molex tooling. I would say a second layer to that is a Molex resource that I think we just call application tooling at Molex.com. And that's a very general help email that takes you to our new business group. And it, it's similar to what I was just saying with TTI, but kind of the Molex version where we dedicate resources toward training these personnel so that if any customer calls that Molex phone line, they should be able to get a answer to that technical tooling question. But we do have a third layer of support, and this is the one that might make you know, some of our customers and engineers ears perk up a little bit because it is a direct line uh, to our tooling group, but we call that line tooling support at molex.com. It's a shared email that has global support behind it, meaning that we have that line man powered pretty much 24 seven. So a customer, if they have a specific application tooling question on one of our products can send an email to that email helpline and expect a technical response within 24 hours max. Thank you, Haley. We'll be sure to post that email down in the show notes as well. Haley, just a quick follow up on, on the general tooling question and, and customers seeking advice. In your experience, is there um, a volume or a type of application when a, t when a customer starts to move away from hand tooling and starts to think about automatic crimp tooling, so it goes away from the hand crimper to the die sets and the, and the auto, auto tooling? I would say there's a ballpark for sure. If I had some of my engineers standing behind me, I can just see them, you know, flashing different numbers like, no, we only would recommend this much. But in my head, I like to keep things simple and memorable. So I would say that crossover point in my head is if a customer is doing, let's say, hundreds of crimps a day, and let's say those crimps are uh, conducive to field repair, to prototyping to low volume production, 
those are probably the use cases where a customer is going to be able to successfully use a hand crimp tool. But as soon as they start crossing over into that, thousands of crimps per day, I think that's where that semi-automated solution becomes really valuable and some additional options start opening up to the customer, right? Uh, In our Molex tooling world, when I say semi-automated, that typically is gonna refer to an applicator, but even with just looking at that Molex applicator, the customer could assemble that Molex applicator into a benchtop crimping press. Uh, That's gonna work really well, again, if they're doing volumes in the thousands, the tens of thousands, but if a customer is planning really to ignite and get into those hundreds of thousands of crimps, that's where I think they want to even look at more automation or or full automation, I should say. And in that case, they'd be installing that applicator into something like a wire processor. Yeah, that's a great point, actually. I hadn't thought about that. So really hand tooling is much more focused on very low volume uh, prototyping, maybe not even on the production floor or in the field and then even when they're in the mid mid to low volumes when they're actually on the um the shop floor they could put the 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 applicator tooling into a into a hand press i hadn't thought about that so that's a great point thank you yeah well said john i think the other thing worth noting there is as soon as a customer can move from that hand crimping you know very manual solution to something more semi-automated the way we design our applicators is that customer is going to gain a lot more in the way of being able to make very small micro adjustments to those crimps, right? Uh, We live in a world where everything seems like it's getting smaller all the time and the crimping world is no exception to that. Um, So now we're getting into these very small gauges of, you know, call it 28, 30, 32 gauge, very, very small uh, terminals and wire. And of course, you know, the tooling for those is resultingly small as well. Um, So if you can move to that applicator solution, you're taking some of the manual nature of the crimping process out of it. Um, You might still manually be presenting the wire with some of those semi-automated solutions, but you're going to gain a lot in the way of being able to make those micro adjustments that are at the end of the day could be the difference between an unacceptable and an acceptable crimp. Oh, thank you, Haley. And I just want to take a second too to let the audience know when you're starting off with your prototypes, with your engineering small quantities, TTI is stocking our pre crimp leads. So, with the pre crimp leads, they're crimped at the factory. You don't need to worry about, you know, um, you know, learning how to use the hand tool, et cetera. When you get up into higher volumes, then you buy the hand tool, and then we can move you to some kind of automated press. So, just wanted to throw that out there. TTI is stocking all of Molex's pre crimp leads. For the engineers out there. And then Haley, just looking forward here, how do you see the market for tooling developing in 2023? And maybe what are some of the challenges that lay ahead? Some of the challenges that would lay ahead and market outlook. I think one of the big trends I'm seeing is if I look at my customer base, something I know that is never going to change is the customer expectation to receive answers very quickly uh, or production is going to suffer, right? Especially if there's some kind of a a tooling or a crimping issue. So that I don't see changing, but I will say that something I've seen, I know we're not quite in a post COVID world, but I'll I'll say as as a ripple effect of COVID, we've seen maybe a challenge to Molex and the industry to offer some additional support options. And for Molex, I think we've taken that feedback to challenge ourselves on what can that mean in the way of web resources. Uh, So one challenge and one resulting opportunity is that I think we have an opportunity to really improve the electronic resources that we offer to our customers. And as that relates to the Molex website, something that we've done is Again, if a customer has the Molex terminal part number, they can search that on our website. And once they get to that terminal product page, they're going to see an application tooling tab that has all of our tools filtered to now only show the tools that will crimp that specific terminal part number. Uh, So that's pretty powerful, right? We're now, instead of having hundreds, potentially thousands of different part numbers in front of them, they just have the ones that are applicable to their crimping use case. Uh, But that only gets us so far, right? Uh, We've been working with partners like TTI to see 
how do we feed that data to their website so that if a customer begins on the TTI website, we don't want them to ever have to leave the TTI website. Uh, in my perfect world, they're buying the terminal and putting that in their shop cart, and then they're purchasing their tooling and putting it in that same shop cart. So if they started on the TTI website with that process, I want to be able to see them um, execute, execute that entire purchase order without ever having to leave that TTI website. So Haley, that's some really great information. So I'm putting myself now into the shoes of the customer. I'm listening to this podcast. Uh, what does this do for me? And why should I be excited about where Molex is going with this and working with people like TTI? Well, let's play that example out for a moment then. If, if I'm customer XYZ, I've just been on the TTI website. I added my connector products to my shopping cart. The links were there where I could see the tooling options that are going to fit my use case. So I go ahead and click add to cart for those tooling products as well. Now I'm checking out. And I think the net benefit of being able to get all of those products in the same cart is that number one, all of those products are going to arrive to my doorstep much faster than they otherwise would have. And then, you know, if I follow the bouncing ball, then the net effect of that is I have those products on my doorstep. Now I can go ahead and utilize those products in whatever testing and validation that I need to perform to get that production program going. And of course, you know, we'll follow the bouncing ball a little further. I would think if you have lots and lots of customers doing that, that are at the end of the day, getting into production faster and faster, that's only going to increase the overall speed of innovation in the marketplace. Great stuff, Haley. And uh, if I'm the customer, that's definitely getting me a few things to think about. So as we wrap this up today, and thanks again for being on with us, uh, any final thoughts or things to look out for as, as we move through the rest of 2023? Get ready for a wild 2023. I know that we have several new connector products that have been in development for the last couple of years that will be hitting the market this year. Uh, it's been a, a wild ride, I think, from 2019 to present day. So we're excited to see these new products hitting the marketplace. And I think, as I mentioned earlier, the tooling designs are always going to be released on the heels of those connector designs. So my ask is, you know, keep your ears perked for new products coming from Molex as well as the new tooling products that'll be following those. So to all of our listeners, that was Haley Henry from the Molex tooling team. And again, Haley, thanks very much for being on and um, look out for more exciting subjects as we move forward in this series. Thank you, Haley. And thank you to our audience for joining us this week. Lots of great information in regards to the tooling group at Molex. That is it for us today. Thank you for joining myself and John Sandy. And check in next time as we talk about big ideas and little known facts in the world of connectors. That's it for this episode of the TTI Distribution Download. For more information on any of the topics you heard about today, reach out to your nearby TTI branch at 1-800-CALL-TTI or visit us online at tti.com.